Hyperlooping Systems, How to Create Unlimited Energy The Secrets That Nikolai Tesla Never Got to Tell And what exactly are those secrets? We're about to get into that subject with my new book that's about to be published. Not out yet, but it's about to be published. So we're not going to cover the whole book, but we want to show you some of the more important things that not one person ever covered about Nikolai Tesla. Why do we call it hyperlooping? Let's look at the batteries on the left hand side and look at the top battery down to the bottom. We're going to cycle these batteries as though there are a water wheel themselves. And you know, in a water wheel system, it is equal water coming into the cup of the water wheel. And then it pours out that same water out into the river. So we're going to cycle these batteries just like a water wheel cycles and rotates. So yes, we're going to rotate or alternate these batteries. And then we're going to prove that Nikolai Tesla himself did this to amplify his system. And then we're going to show you that this amplifies a system. So we're doing exactly what Nikolai Tesla did with new type of equipment in our time. So you understand that this system has been used over a hundred years ago. Okay. So we just wanted you to see how to set up your batteries and then leapfrog from battery to battery and battery until you get to the bottom and then start back at the top while charging the batteries that you come off of and discharging the batteries that are fresh while charging the battery you just came from. Now that's, and then when you keep cycling that way, that's what we call over unity. Now, this book is not about over unity. It's about hyper looping, but it uses over unity because those batteries will never go dead if you keep charging them and only taking a small amount of electricity off those batteries at a time. All right, let's get. So let's see this proof by Nikolai Tesla. Look at the picture above. This is Nikolai Tesla's laboratory in Colorado. And how do we know that these are batteries and that they use them for amplification and switching and smaller batteries in the back? Well, let's see what it says when we researched it. And here it is, files, Nickel, no, Tesla's Colorado Springs Laboratory, primary circuit of amplification. There's your proof. Now, how did he amplify it? See how it's steady, it, um, it's not fluctuating like it was the last time. That's due to the batteries being full. And you see it's dropping really fast. So long as I keep these batteries up and run it to around 800 and then jump to a fresh set of batteries, then that would be over unity. Okay. Okay, the system is quiet. 
and that's because we haven't got anything running as we look at the watt meter we see that it is uh, standing of 4.1 watts going out that's because those green lights is on so it's drawing power but it's not going anywhere um, this is this right here is not plugged in um, you see that it is 48 volts that always goes down when it's actually drawing power so let's plug this in and um, you'll be able to see um, when it starts drawing power let's see if I can get both of these in the frame okay and uh, you can barely see that says 48 it hasn't kicked in as soon as this number up here kicks in up uh, see so it's starting to draw power and that number see how it jumps up and now that's an important number and this is an important number okay because this is putting energy back into the grid and this is taking it from the grid okay now when we're talking about hyperlooping this number over here has to be less and this number over here has to be more or you don't get there your hyperloop okay now I did fool around with this and almost and that number every time you get closer to those syncing up the that number will uh, be study but again to study it out is to put the battery in and that's our boost and that's what we want to cover is that this number instead of 123 you know and, and you have it right and that one is saying 140 um, is lower so right now this number is higher it's putting out see where it jumped up to 80 then it goes down to 60 these numbers are way higher than these numbers so again when we want to hyperloop and we start putting in that battery power. That's why it's so important about over unity. Okay. Look at that number here. And like last time it wasn't study. The batteries are charged. And look at that number here. So we're drawing 120. 119. Okay, these these calm down. And that thing says 900. That's a hyperloop. That means we are putting more energy in the grid. And remember, these are watts. So people can't argue about oh no amps times volts these are watts and that W down there these are watts so we're drawing 116 and we're putting in the grid 950 okay and that's because we are using those batteries as boost so when you alternate batteries, you can charge up the batteries. You're, you're, you're supposed to flip-flop or you have a, a circle of batteries, just like a water wheel. And that actually works. And again, a battery guy told me I was crazy and it sounded like a bunch of nonsense. But again, you're seeing the system work. Let's see if we can get that focus in there. 114 and 940 or if you can say 30 because it, it'll go down but 
again, you're seeing that this tie grid is putting more voltage back into our system than it's drawing from the electrical plug. And that's what it's supposed to do when you hyperloop. And we can get much, much better just with this little small setup. Okay? Now the battery has gone down to 29. That means right now we should be charging those batteries, moving to the full batteries, and letting them discharge into the grid. And you keep doing that and flip-flopping or what we call frog leaping batteries to batteries so it gives the, the these batteries that's draining right now a chance to recharge again this is hyper looping as you see we went down because that battery is what they're saying needs to be charged okay so we're going to stop this right here we just wanted to document what's going on and thank you